Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Education Station with Blank Park Zoo. My name is Jared, and I am here today uh, from our education department. My job at the zoo is to travel all over the state of Iowa, bringing animals to people who can't always come to the zoo. I know the zoo is a long ways away and hard to get to for some people, but today we're coming right into your homes. Um, I'm joined today with McKenna. Hi, I'm the hospitality manager here at the zoo. And we have a special animal guest for you today. This is Babs. Babs is a box turtle and she is one of my favorite animals at the education department. One of the coolest things I think about Babs is actually her age. She's not a very big turtle, but she's actually 42 years old. She was born in 1978. So she is a pretty old, old turtle. Now, if you've come to the zoo, you probably recognize some of the other turtles and tortoises around. We have a big, big, big tortoise at the zoo named Barnaby. He is an Aldabra tortoise, and he is um, in his 90s, we think. He's so old, we don't even really know exactly how old he is. Now, Babs is not going to get nearly that old or that big. She's pretty much fully grown at this point, but she's still got a lot of fight left in her. She's still running around. Um, she loves exploring. She's super nosy, loves checking out what's going on. Um, and you can see when she walks around here, she's not that slow. She can get moving when she really, really wants to. We're going to do our best to keep her from moving too far. But they've got some speed to them. Now, Box turtles are kind of special turtles. They're not turtles like every other turtle's a turtle uh, for a couple different reasons. The biggest identifier for turtles is usually their feet. If you look at their feet, you can tell where they live. If we think about sea turtles, sea turtles have big flippers that help them swim, lightning fast through the water. Snapping turtles have big webbed feet to help them paddle through the water and catch those fish. If we look at um, Babs' feet, they're not webbed. She doesn't have those great, great swimming feet. So even though she uh, doesn't have those normal turtle features, um, she kind of acts much more like a tortoise, but she is still considered a turtle. So while the turtle part of her name can be a little confusing, the box part of her name is not. Now, box turtles, have some extra special shells. Every turtle uses its shell to protect itself and to hide, but if I pulled my head inside my shirt, anybody could still poke me in the top of the head. So if a turtle pulls themselves inside of their shells, they can still get poked, but a box turtle can do one better. Now box turtles have this little tiny hinge on the bottom of their shell that helps their shell close up like a box when they go and hide inside of it. Now Babs doesn't do it very often because you can see Babs is adventurous, Babs is brave. She is not afraid of much, so she doesn't hide in her shell very often. I'm gonna give her some food and see if she uh, is interested in slowing down a little bit for some breakfast, and it doesn't seem like it. So their shells are a super crazy cool part of their body. And what's even cooler is that they're just a part of their body. A box turtle's shell uh, is something that they're born with, just like how human babies are born with their hands, their feet, all of those things. Turtles are born with their shells. When she hatched out of an egg, she was itty bitty tiny, but she still had her shell. And her shell has grown with her her entire life, and a lot of times people think that she can leave it, but she can't. It's a part of her body. If she left it, it would be like leaving your arm behind. It's a super important part of her body that she wouldn't want to leave. So while it is kind of her home, she's just at home digging holes underground, uh, making burrows there. She is hiding inside of her shell. McKenna, do we have any questions rolling in on Facebook well, yet? Well, I am having some technical difficulties with my cell phone, but I have some personal questions for you. Yeah, what do you want to know? Um, what part of the world is Babs from? So you can find box turtles all over the, the Americas, all over the United States. We even have box turtles in Iowa. Now, they're not quite the same kind as Babs here. Babs lives a little farther south than Iowa, but Babs still does have... Um, a lot of relatives in the area. We have ornate box turtles, which are one of the coolest box turtle because they're ornate. They look very, very pretty. So you can find them all over the place. Um, but Babs, not quite here. Okay. Um, and I see you got some food right over there. What kind of food does she like to eat? So Babs uh, is an omnivore, which means she eats about everything. She loves her, her veggies. It might not look like it, but she does love her veggies. Um, <laughs> she's got some um, lettuce here. She's got some carrots. She has um, some of these things that are just kind of special turtle food made just for turtles, like dog and cat food is made just for dogs and cats. So that special turtle food, um, helps get her the protein and the nutrients that she doesn't always get from lettuce. So, while this is a lot of her main diet, 
A big part of her diet is actually bugs. She does need her protein, but she's quicker than you think, but not the fastest thing in the world. So she has a hard time catching a lot of bugs, but she does eat some crickets. She will eat some cockroaches, but things like earthworms, earthworms are easy to find when she's digging around underground. So um, she eats a little bit of everything, but vegetables, bugs, those are a lot of her favorites. All right, and you said she's in her 40s, so she's kind of old. Uh, how old do they usually get? So while she does seem pretty old, she's still got a lot of life ahead of her. They can live 50 to 60 years, uh, which is quite a long time. Um, so while she is, she, she's older than I am by about two times, uh, she's still got a lot of life ahead of her, and she's still got another, hopefully, 10 to 20 years left in her. All right, and I am able to get Facebook questions from the public again, but uh, one more question for me. Um, is she full grown? So she is probably full grown. Um, she's not the biggest box turtle. She actually has a sister at the zoo named Peggy who's a little bit bigger than her. Um, but I always say that just like every person doesn't grow to be LeBron James sized, every box turtle is not going to get as big as it possibly can. So since she's 40, she's probably done growing. Okay. Um, but I've seen box turtles bigger. And what are their main predators? So their main predators um, would be uh, lots of different things. Um, you get birds every once in a while, dogs, cats, wild dogs, wild cats, um, all kinds of things, including people. Um, people do eat turtle on occasion. It's a, it's a popular thing. There is a season for turtle. Uh, turtles are actually protected in um, at least Iowa, I believe, um, more than just Iowa. But turtles are protected because they are really important to the environment. Um, but those are probably their main predators. Okay. And then Brenda asks, what kind of habitat does she live in? So she is more of kind of a grassland turtle. Um, we often think of turtles as, like, as water dwellers, which I kind of touched on earlier. But she is much more at home in the prairies, the plains. So she is a Midwest girl, um, but just a little farther south uh, in the Midwest. So she's very at home in the dirt and the sandy plains. OK. And then other than their shells, do they seek any other kind of shelter? So their shelter is going to be um, digging under things, hiding under things. At the zoo, um, Babs is always hiding under logs, hiding under um, different hides and places we give her to hide. Um, but they are, like I said, with her claws on her feet, are pretty proficient diggers. So she can dig those burrows to live in. Um, so those are the kind of the main shelters that they like to hide in. OK. And um, do they make good pets? So it kind of depends on your definition of a good pet. On one hand, she's 42. The reason she came to the zoo is because the person who had her before us just couldn't quite take care of them as well as he wanted to because they just lived so darn long. Now, if I got a box turtle, a bitty bitty baby box turtle right now, by the time I'm 70 or 80 years old, I'm still going to have that pet box turtle. When I'm 70 or 80, I'm not going to want to have to be cleaning up after a turtle because they can get kind of stinky and kind of gross. Uh -huh. Another thing to keep in mind is that they eat bugs and worms. So you have to have bugs and worms in your house to feed them. They require special lights and a lot of space. So if you're prepared and you've done your research and a turtle is the pet for you, they can be a good pet. But it's just kind of a particular pet. So if you are interested in turtles, make sure to do your research. I think that they do get kind of gross, especially when they're swimmers. But to each their own. All right. And then Brenda or Beth asked, will they bite people? So anything with a mouth could bite. I've never been bit by one of these turtles before. Um, I think snapping turtles kind of give all turtles a bad name sometimes. Um, if they thought my finger was a carrot or I was trying to feed them out of my hand and um, they kind of lost sight of what part was food and what part was finger. I might get a nip, but she's never going to go out of her way to bite me. If she's scared of something, if I spook her when she first wakes up, she's going inside of her shell. She's not going to go out and attack like maybe a cornered dog would or something like that. So more of a flight than much, response. Much more flight than fight. And then Bailey asked, why are they called box turtles? So they're called box turtles. I touched on this a little bit earlier, but as you guys kind of come and go, I'll, I'll bring things back up. She's got this hinge on the bottom of her shell that helps her close her shell up over her face like a box to keep her safe, to make sure that nothing can breach her shell uh, when she's trying to hide from them. So that's where they get their box name. And then Jenny asked, but this is from Eli, um, do they have predators? So they do have predators. Um, from dogs and cats to birds of prey to um, 
people, maybe when they're, they're younger, even some smaller things like snakes, it's gonna, not, not gonna be as common as dogs or cats or birds, but a lot of things would try their, try their hand at eating turtles. And then Sandy asked if we knew how much she weighs specifically. Oh, goodness. I don't know how much she weighs specifically, um, partly because we weigh them all in grams and I'm not good enough to convert grams to pounds in something that makes sense to me. She's not very heavy. Um, I would say less than a pound, honestly, she's not very big. Um, but she is pretty hard, she is pretty dense. All right. Do we have any other questions rolling in? Um, we don't have any questions rolling in from Facebook Live, but uh, how many other box turtles do we have at the zoo? So at the zoo, we've got a whole handful of box turtles. We've got um, Babs, her sister Peggy, their brother Vern, and Donatello and Shelby. So we've got five box turtles in the education department, um, but at the zoo we have so many other different types of turtles and tortoise. I talked about the giant Aldabra tortoise that we have. We have some sulcata tortoises over in our African area. We've got some Indian star tortoises in the Discovery Center. In our education department, we've got gopher tortoises, box turtles, uh, we've got a star tortoise. So we've got all kinds of things. And in our Discovery Center, we have a, a plethora of different um, turtles kind of running around in the water as well. So we've got lots of different turtles and tortoises around the zoo. And in Iowa, there's tons of different turtles and tortoises. I always kind of uh, rag on Iowa for not having the most vibrant reptiles. I'm a, I'm a big reptile lover. I love my snakes, I love my lizards. We don't have a ton for lizards. We've got a lot for snakes. We've got a ton for turtles too. There's a lot of really unique turtles out there, a lot of really cool turtles. In Iowa, we have what's called soft shell turtles, which is kind of exactly what it sounds like. They're turtles with softer shells, which is crazy because that's kind of the one thing that turtles are known for is that hard shell. So there's turtles all over the place. In Iowa, we've got tons and tons of turtles. At the zoo, we've got tons of turtles and tortoises. Um, so yeah, there's, there's all kinds of stuff with our turtles and tortoises around the zoo. All right, and then Janet asked, are turtles able to be trained? So you can train um, turtles and tortoises. It's honestly similar to training a dog or a cat. I'm not sure if it's a whole lot easier or harder one way or the other. I'm sure we have some zookeepers at the zoo who would have some opinions on it. But our giant tortoise, Barnaby, weighs 500 pounds. So if we want him to do something, we can't just make him do it. So he has to be trained to do certain things, to go certain places. He can't be outside in the winter time, it's way too cold. Even in April today, it's way too cold. So he's kind of trained to go places because we can't move him. So he goes inside and when we know it's gonna be cold, he can't check his weather app to see if it's gonna be cold at night. We can, and so we, he's trained to kind of move on his own because he's just too big for us to move. <laughs> Barney's, Barnaby's pretty uh, food motivated. Yeah, he is very, very food motivated. <laughs> and then Beth wanted to know, would she walk off the edge if you let her? She wouldn't walk all the way off the edge. There are times where she gets a foot off and kind of falls a little bit um, and then has to kind of reset herself, but her legs aren't very close together, so she doesn't exactly turn on a dime. So when she gets to the edge, it's hard for her to get turned around. She can do it, she won't fall off, but I don't want her to get there. All right. But you can see, you can see she's moving. I said that earlier. She is adventurous and she's would be going even faster if the top of this table wasn't at least a little bit slick. <laughs> All righty. Well, I don't have any more questions and it looks like we are hitting the end of our questions on Facebook Live. Do you have anything else to add, Jay? Oh, there's lots I probably could talk about. Um, these Turtles, like I talked about, are reptiles. Um, and kind of the big identifying feature about reptiles is their scales. And while people think about scales with snakes shedding their scales, turtles do shed a little bit too, but they don't shed their shells. But they will shed the scales on their arms, their heads, their necks. So they do have scales like all other reptiles. And the other big thing about them is that they're cold-blooded, so they're not just like you and I. When it's cold outside, we shiver, they don't. When it's hot outside, we sweat, but reptiles don't. When they get cold, they just have to find somewhere warm. That's why you'll see turtles sitting up on logs in ponds. You'll see snakes up in trees, lizards on rocks. Lots of those things in those places that it gets nice and toasty, and when it gets too hot, they'll find somewhere cooler. So they'll dip into the water, they'll go into the shade, they'll dig underground. So they spend a lot of their time going back and forth between those hot and cold places. 
Alrighty, and then just a question off the top of my head. Do they ever get any other coloring? I see she's got a little bit of some yellow on her face. She does have some yellow on her face and her arms. Um, that's kind of her color. That's a base color for a lot of turtles. Ornate box turtles have a little more red on them. So there's turtles with all kinds of different colors on them. Um, box turtles like Babs and Peggy and Vern kind of get those spots here and there. But that's about all they have for those bright, vibrant colors. All right. And then um, how long do they live? So they can live 50 to 60 years. They can live a long time. Um, like I said earlier, she was born in 1978, so she's about 42 years old. So she's getting up there, but she still has a lot of life left in her. You can see her running around, being adventurous, being exciting. Um, so while she is pretty old, she can still live a little bit longer. Alrighty. And then uh, how old are the other box turtles in the zoo? You said she has a sister here? So her sister and brother are all the same age. They're all okay. born in 1978, so they're all that age. Um, our other box turtles are a little bit younger. We've got one, oh, testing my knowledge here, in the teens, I believe, and one in the 20s. So, I mean, they're pretty long-lived animals. Um, and that's another thing, we, like we talked about pets earlier, it can just be tricky when you have an animal for that long of a time. I know in the last 15 of my years, I've moved so many times and life has changed so many different times and different ways and I've been so many different places that if I had a turtle, I would have to drag them all over with me. And that's not something that I usually wanna do. So, um, they can just be kind of tricky pets. And then you work with these animals uh, all the time. Do they have different personalities from each other? They certainly do have different personalities. It seems kind of strange to talk about um, different turtle personalities, but they do all have personalities. And if you ask the tortoise keepers, they would tell you the same thing. Um, one of our box turtles, whenever we're cleaning, always has her nose in everyone's business, wants to know what's going on. The other ones are pretty lazy. Some of them like running around. Some of them are pretty lazy. Uh, so they all do have those different little quirks and personalities that you really get to know when you work with them. We usually just think about dogs and cats having those personality traits, but it can be anything from lizards, snakes, birds, cats, dogs, turtles. Everything has those personality quirks. That the more you're with those animals, the more you kind of learn who they are. And then we had a few people, Christina and Tina, ask if they're warm-blooded, you said earlier. So they are, they're cold-blooded, and cold-blooded is kind of a tricky word because it has nothing to do with their blood being cold. It just means that they rely on the outside temperature to control their temperature. Like I said, we can shiver and we can sweat to help us cool down or warm up. They have to find somewhere warm. They have to find somewhere cold uh, to make sure that they stay the right temperature. And so they have to spend a lot of time going through those different places and different changes. In the winter time in the Midwest, it does get very, very cold. And they do what's called brew mating, which is very similar to hibernation, but um, it's kind of a reptile thing instead of a mammal thing. Um, yeah. Oh, and then about how much do we feed them here at the zoo? So this is uh, a little less than their morning diet um, that I had out. She's spread it out and eaten some of it too. Um, so they get, a handful of food. Again, I don't know the, the weight or amount of their their food that way, but they usually leave a little bit left for us. Um, if we give them bugs, they'll gobble bugs right up. They're very interested in eating those things that move around and run around a little bit. Um, lettuce isn't nearly as exciting, but they do still like it. All right. All right. Um, do you have any other um, programs or anything going on? On yeah, Facebook. so every Tuesday and Thursday at 1045, we're going to be doing our education station, so always tune in for that. Um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we've got some kids create um, some zoo crafts at home. It's super fun stuff. Um, keep an eye on the Facebook. We're always posting those updates. We're always um, talking about some of the new things that are coming to the zoo. I know in this kind of um, weird time, it's nice to have those scheduled normalcies. So um, keep tuned into the zoo. Keep an eye on things. It, things are always exciting. Things are always changing um, here at Blank Park Zoo. But I think that's about all the time we have. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Check back in Thursday for another education station and check back in tomorrow for some more stuff from the zoo. And don't forget to like and share the post from the zoo with your friends and family on Facebook. Thanks, guys.